Welcome viewers. We have been joined today by community members, Mr. and Mrs. Bruce Christensen, and Mr. Bruce is also a city councillor. Welcome to the program. Our pleasure to be here. Excellent. Yes. So, Bruce, beginning from you, you have worked and lived here for around or more than 25 years. 30. 30, 30 years, years January 2nd. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wow. So, in 30 years, uh, what has been the scope of trades activities in our region? You mean the activity of the different trades? Businesses, activities, and the overall scope of trades activities. I would have to say that since we moved here 30 years ago, the trade activity based on the activity of, of the economy has been very good. You know, whether you are of a skilled trade or a non-skilled trade, there is and has been um, a lot of work and a lot of opportunity for potential for, for a person to progress and become what they want to become. Very good. And what have been your responsibilities as a city councillor? I did not have an agenda when I got elected, and I still don't have an agenda. <laughs> I was asked to, to um, become a councillor by a few people in town. My only agenda, I guess, and my responsibility is to the citizens that elect me. I try to be, and I believe I am, honest to them and ethical. As a councillor, I am one member of a seven-member committee. I argue the points that I feel need to be argued. My job, I feel, as a councillor is to work with the remainder of members of council to provide a city that um, people like yourselves, um, other people from around the world and around Canada and around British Columbia would want to come here and raise their families. Excellent. And Cheryl, mm -hmm. how have you enjoyed living in Fort St. John for around 30 years? Yes, I have really enjoyed living in Fort St. John. I've uh, made many acquaintances and, and good friends, and uh, I am a homemaker, but I, for, I worked out of the home for several years. And uh, we, uh, and now that I'm involved in several committees and um, groups, and I'm really still enjoying living here. And I'm looking forward to the next years. Great. And how has Fort St. John changed in the last three decades, in your opinion? Well, there's been a lot of activity. When we first moved here, lots of people, but not as many as there is now. And there's lots of vehicles, and there's lots of new construction of, of uh, different businesses and uh, homes, condos and uh, it just seems to be building and building and since we've been here uh, in Fort St. John they built the high school and uh, we also saw the cultural center open where it is now and we've seen um, the regional hospital be built now we're in the process of are they in the process of building a new school so there's been lots of different things and so it's really grown excellent mm -hmm. And Bruce, we have also been working for the Rotary Club. What's their philosophy? Rotary's philosophy, ro Rotary and Rotarians, is uh, peace, peace in the world. And uh, to make the world a better place, to eliminate um, poverty. Uh, right now, Rotary's big focus is on polio. We started in 1988. We started a program to eliminate polio, and right now we're down to three endemic countries. Uh, it used to be 100,000 kids uh, a year that died from polio. Now, in the last year, I believe there's only been 10 in those three endemic countries. So it's, it's a big project of Rotary. Uh, we have, we, I say we, I speak Rotary as we, uh, around the world have, have supplied water wells. We have supplied, we've assisted uh, doctors in India to provide limbs for people that have lost their use of their limbs as a result of polio. We've done a lot of things, but I guess it's just serving humanity is our, is our philosophy. Excellent. And you have also contributed for Peace River Regional District. So please tell us about your role and your contributions there. On the regional, at the regional table, you work with uh, you know, about 14 other members there, and you work towards a cohesive uh, unit going forth to make uh, the region uh, the place where doctors want to come, 
where developers want to come and a, a region that has um, safe Cheryl mentioned the regional hospital that's a regional district initiative supported by the city obviously but it's uh, it's those type of things that that uh, happened at the regional district level and understanding that the city is also a member of the regional district you're a member of the regional district uh, we're all members of the regional district if we live in northeast bc so and how do you see this region and fort st george develop further in the next few years in your opinion i think there's huge potential um, i know there's huge potential and i um, you know see, fort st john is seen as the service center of northeast british columbia now if you live in other communities around you may say well that's being braggish or whatever but when I travel as a former member of the board of the British Columbia Chamber of Commerce and as a former member of the British Columbia Construction Association when they talk about Northeast BC they talk about Fort St. John being the center the service center not the center but the service center of Northeast British Columbia and I think we've done a good job but I think there's more to be done I think uh, you know now with the uh, site C being uh, Prove to go ahead, I think that is going to bring issues. And I think if we work together as a regional district and as a city, we can resolve those issues to everybody's, maybe not 100% to their, everybody's liking, but that's always the way it is, right? It's like when we plow snow, we plow it to the side or do we plow it to the middle? There's always a bit of a controversy. And issues dealing with Site C and the impact of Site C and the outcomes from Site C are going to be issues that are going to be agreed or disagreed by members of the regional district and of the city. Right. And Sharon, mm -hmm. who is your favorite author? Well, over the years I've read several authors. I don't really have a particular favorite, but one that comes to mind is uh, Rita McNeil. I um, she wrote a book, or with the uh, Ann Simmons, they wrote a book um, on a personal note. And I actually really have enjoyed Rita McNeil's music over the years when she was alive. And I got to see her in 2009, which was very special. And then um, I, I read her book, which was about her life, and I found it very, very interesting. And that's, and I think. Great. Yeah. And what are the things you like the best? Of the in the book, yeah. well, because she's from down east, and it gave me a perspective of another part of Canada, and the the different trials and tribulations, and and how she came out of all of that, I would say more on top, because she was such she was such a neat person. Great. Mm -hmm. And who's your favorite author? You no, know, when you get into council, you do a lot of reading as it is, and not a lot of time reading books. I find when I when I get away from reading council information or rotary information or elks or whatever <laughs> happens to be. Sometimes it's just fun to sit down and maybe watch a hockey game or something, but um, Winston Churchill, um, yes, he was the Prime Minister of, of England, but he also wrote some books and he wrote six books on talking about the war and um, the um, how the war affected the people of, of the United Kingdom uh, first and foremost, but the war affected everybody in the world, and uh, so uh, there were some good, some good uh, things from that. So I would have to say, like I say, I don't really have a favorite. I like to read books. Like uh, I read a book on it was called Anne Howe, which was written by Colleen Howe, Gordy Howe's wife, about Gordy Howe and about his family and how he got to be where he was. Uh, Ron McLean, that's uh, one of the stars on Hockey in Canada wrote a book about the different small towns, Canada, and young hockey players come out of that. I, I like that kind of a thing, so I really don't have one person, though. No. Right. Thank you. Good points. And my next question is from Cheryl. Mm -hmm. This program will be airing close to Valentine's Day. Mm -hmm. So how many Valentine days we have spent celebrated together? Well, we met in September of 71, and so this Valentine's Day we will be celebrating uh, 40 three years, 47 years, <laughs> I knew that too, <laughs> 47 years, and, okay, uh, so there was five that weren't good, <laughs> <laughs> and 
we were married in June of uh, 72, so we will be celebrating 47 years of, of, uh, of wedded bliss. Congratulations. <laughs> that Thank looks you. very good. And uh, look forward to also invite you on the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. So what do you think are some important things in relationship? What are some things you have learned? Well, um, working together as a team is very important in the relationship and being kind to one another and the, the art of compromise once in a while and also let's see what else I would think. Um, the art of compromise yes. is itself you know, a very <laughs> important point. Yeah. It is. And taking time for one another, making more time for one another is very important. Good point. Mm -hmm. And what do you think, Bruce, are important things similarly mm -hmm. for very successful relationships to have 50 Valentine days together? Um, you get me emotional though. <laughs> <laughs> I tell her I love her every day. I think that's important. Um, love is an interesting thing, but love is not something you can experience by yourself. Love is something that's shared, mm -hmm. and uh, we hope we have 50 more. Mm -hmm. We're going to try. Absolutely. <laughs> okay. Good, good. And uh, thank you for sharing, you know, this personal part for a good purpose. Mm -hmm. I've also noticed you have some very good, nice, romantic dialogues post for her on your Facebook page. Would you like to quote one here? No, I, 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 I don't think there's any one. Um, a lot of them are not ones that, that I come up with. They're, they're somebody else has put in there and I've shared it because I feel very important that, that uh, you know, as Cheryl has said, we have to work together to make a relationship work. And, uh, and I believe that's true whether I'm on city council or the regional district or certainly in a marriage mm -hmm. and raising children and spoiling grandchildren <laughs> and that type of thing. That's so, a pleasant job too. Yes, it, it is. It is. Oh, very, yes, very much so, yeah. Excellent. And finally, Bruce, would you like to comment on the famous quote of Thomas Merton, love is our true destiny? Well, Thomas had quite a few famous quotes, and it was to do with love. And I think the, the one on the destiny was, I, I, I sort of answered it already when I said that, that um, love is not an individual thing. Love is a shared thing. And I believe that... Uh, that is our destiny in life, and I think, uh, once again, love is, we, th we think of love always between a man and a woman, but there's love in a workplace, and there's love in communications, and so on and so forth, but you need to share, you need to share um, your feelings, and I think uh, if you share your feelings and you're honest, your destiny will be good. Excellent. And final question from Cheryl. What do you believe would be the art of a successful life? I think um, for myself, what I have is the art of a um, successful life because I'm a, a wife, a mother, and a, a grandmother several times. We have four grandchildren, and they're all very special to us. Excellent. You two look wonderful. Thank you for coming to our program, and we wish you all the best and a very happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Yes, thank you.